right, so next, uh, a very powerful feature um, within Leopard and, and, the, and uh, the OpenGL standard is multi-threading. So what does that mean? Well, let's say that you have a machine that has more than one core, and, and I think all the apples now have multi or multi cord so we can or the OpenGL can now utilize um, these extra cores to offload overhead uh, from the prime from from the primary core to the second core and totally dedicate or dedicate at least a large part of that um, second or third fourth core uh, to do the communication with a GPU. Because traditionally, let, let's say that you have your CPU, and I'll put that up here on the screen, you have your CPU, and part of that CPU will get used up in, in processing your OpenGL instructions. And the Open, G, OpenGL instructions will then go across the pipe, communicate with the GPU, so on and so forth. So this goes back and forth to get you what you see on the screen. Well, now imagining uh, a, you basically taking away that most of that OpenGL operation and offloading it onto another core and then having that second core now communicate with the GPU freeing up a lot more of the first core um, to do other operations, other applications uh, or whatever maybe you just and you basically are freeing up more of the prime the primary core to do whatever you want it to do so this is a really powerful um, feature in that um, we get a performance gain and some will argue not in every case because yes not in every application will um, utilize this feature but certainly within Leopard it can be enabled at least if anybody chooses to program such an application to be able to offload these OpenGL instructions um, onto other cores to communicate with the GPU um, and I, I know that there are debates based upon that well we're not going to be able to to do that or this program doesn't do that and, and that is true in some cases but um, like I said the benefit is there and if it, it is used you're going to get a performance gain on doing that so uh, extremely powerful being able to offload um, what which once was something that really used a lot of overhead on on the CPU now being offloaded to another core communicating with the GPU the next, the next feature that I wanted to touch on was higher asynchronicity. Now, everyone's like, whoa, okay, what is that? Well, traditionally, let's say that you have, and I'm going to try to be less technical and give a very simple uh, explanation. Um, but let's say that, you're, you, that you have an instruction, and that instruction is sent to the GPU or whatever. And... Um, it now waits for a response, okay? And so let's say that the time it takes to go to the GPU to get the answer it wants is a certain amount of time. Um, so one point is syncing with another, and it's, it's basically waiting. Or you can have it asynchronous, where that previous command was waiting for an answer and it wouldn't do anything else, uh, until it really got that answer. Um, asynchronous would be that you have that same instruction, it's still waiting to get the answer back, but it continues to uh, basically execute the subsequent instructions. So that one instruction set, while it may be waiting for uh, an answer, we can run the subsequent instructions and then they can get their own answers as well. Um, very crude and simple explanation uh, but it is something that gives you performance gain uh, on Leopard and it's something that should be noted. A more uh, uh, simplistic example uh, of what I'm trying to get across here is let's, let's say you have a line of people and there's like a station up there um, where we need to get some information from this this help desk. Um, Traditionally, there, we, we would all be in this line, and then the first person at the line would go and submit their, their question and wait for an answer. And But nobody else could, could submit their question. Well, asynchronously, that first person would submit their question and wait for an answer. Then the next person would simply go, even though that first person hasn't, hasn't received an answer, 
uh, we can continue to process the people in line so they can submit their their questions and wait for their answers and of course that all relies on 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 the the clerk or, or station who's going to do the answering which would be the gpu um, or other task or other processing center um, the, the limits of that of course are how many we can keep sending asynchronously before it gets busy but anyway i hope that explains the the higher asynchronicity um, either way in leopard performance gain all right and um, also in leopard we all know that it is a 64-bit from the ground up um, but also within op OpenGL, uh, it can be compiled to 64-bit and 32-bit, basically like um, my vids on um, what is the difference between 32-bit and 64-bit. Um, while those were uh, crude and simplistic ex explanations, uh, I'll tr also try to keep it simple here, simply stating that um, with 64-bit now, we have a larger data set to work with. So... Um, faster applications but at the same time it uh, of course supports 32-bit apps so it's a it's a nice luxury for those um, apps that are that are still using 32 have support and those that um, will develop for the future that will utilize the 64-bit uh, data set um, all the more making Leopard uh, more powerful and giving performance gains